Hello, hello, welcome back to another video. My name is Gemma and today I'm going to tell you a little bit about me and booktube. How I booktube, what I think of booktube, do I want to sack it off, those sorts of things. And I'm going to bundle this into the behind the booktube tag, which was a fabulous tag put together by the wonderful Shelley Swearingen. If you haven't checked out Shelley's channel, mate, you are missing out. I will link her uh, original tag video below, but just all of her content is smashing. So go and do yourself a favor and check out Shelly. So there are like a load of questions, 13, 13 questions. Um, and I'm gonna answer them for you today. And uh, as I said, we're gonna run through my, basically my relationship with BookTube, what I think of it. Um, I would also like to segue here and say, Scott from Gunpowder Fiction and Plot did an awesome version of this video. If you haven't seen it, I will also link it below because it was outstanding. And um, quite frankly, he gave me loads of booktube tips. So I, uh, yeah, I, I won't be taking them all on board <laughs> because of time restraints. But um, Scott's content is like excellent. So uh, yeah, we could all learn a thing or two, I believe, from Scott. Um, but let's start with some questions, shall we? And I may, I may go on some tangents as we go through, but I will try to keep it reasonably concise. So what has surprised me most about BookTube? Well, apart from the fact that people actually want to watch me talk about books, which quite frankly blows my mind, I'm afraid I'm going to have to go for the standard answer here, and it's the community, the other BookTubers on the platform. As I have been on BookTube for two, two years, just over two years now, um, I have met many, many, many BookTubers, and I love them all so dearly my my biggest i guess this goes into what surprised me in a bad way sort of um and that's the inability to keep up with good creators um i've met lots of them i would love to watch all of everyone's videos but i just don't have time because there's just too many there's just too many amazing booktubers and um I think one of the things that surprised me was when I first started watching BookTube, I was very much watching the YA, <laughs> like YA fantasy BookTubers, uh, who are also fabulous, do not get me wrong, um, but that's not 100% my jam. But then I sort of started discovering other BookTubers that were reading books more similar to me. And as I entered the platform, I don't know, I don't know whether this... Um, was always there or whether it's something that has sort of arisen in the last two years but I found that there are more and more people who are reading my sorts of books who are doing things like following the women's prize following the booker prize follow all the prizes let's just follow all the prizes um and that's just awesome um and uh obviously this year if you if you follow me me and Alice from Alice in the Giant Bookshelf and Charlie from Charlie Book Reads did the Women's Prize plod along where we followed the Women's Prize through the whole season, read most of the books. The other two read all of the books. There were a couple I didn't read. And we had loads and loads of guests on through the season and just the um, the conversations that we had, the willingness of other booktubers to collaborate and partake in, you know, baby booktuber content you know we had eric carl anderson come on our plots and talk to us about the women's prize um and he is like a superstar right he's like booktube royalty uh and he came on our tiny little channels and talked to us about the women's prize and it's just just the the love of books and the way that people um talk about it and want to be involved is just the best the best thing about booktube and i promised i wouldn't waffle and now i have failed the worst thing about booktube what's bad about booktube what surprised me in a bad way i think the pressure that i put on myself uh i have sort of eased up on myself a little bit lately but like when I first started, probably for the first 18 months, I put a lot of pressure on myself to make sure that I was uploading at the same day, at the same time, every week, week in, week out, regardless of what I had going on in my personal life or how how stressed I was, whether I was ill. I was getting those videos out, I was churning them. Um, and though I think that did help with the growth of my channel, it, it's, 
it's a lot, right? It's a lot. So um, when you've got a full-time job and kids and, you know, a life, <laughs> all these other things going on, and you're trying to read as well, right? Because if you don't read, you've got no content. So, um, yeah, so just like the pressure that I put on myself was something that surprised me in a bad way, uh, but I'm, I'm working on that. I'm working on that. And this segue is quite nicely into question two, which is how do I balance booktube, reading, life, all of all of the things? Um, and the answer is I wing it, mate. I wing it. Um, I don't I don't really balance it. I kind of just flit about just trying to make everything work. And sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. And uh, that's my life. Whether I have booktube in it or not, that would still be my life. Uh, so, yeah. I don't have a good answer to that. The third question is, have you ever thought about starting up a Patreon? <gasps> oh, yes, 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 of course, of course. Um, I'd love to know <laughs> what other people think about Patreon, about me specifically starting up a Patreon, if you would be interested. Um, because yeah, I would like to at some point, I would say at the moment, I really don't have the time um, because if I did a Patreon, I would want to make it added value for people who were paying, you know? Uh, I And I don't feel like I have the, the spare capacity time-wise at the moment to do that, but it is something I would like to do. Let's be honest, I know people have their opinions about Patreon, um, <laughs> there was quite the drama about it last year, but I'm not going to get into it. But, mate, I'd love a bit of extra cash for doing the things that I love, right? So, is that not the dream that you make your living through things that you love and are passionate about? That's the dream, right? Uh, so, yes, I would love to. I would love to have that as an extra additional income source, but uh, yeah, I would have. I wouldn't want to half cock it, so it's not going to be in the immediate future, but maybe one day. Have you ever made any mistakes on BookTube? Well, I'm just going to insert here a clip of my very first BookTube video, and I'll let you answer that for yourselves. Um, fantastic. Loved it. It was so well done, so well executed. Really, really enjoyed it. Pandora's jar is quite different. Do you have any advice for new booktubers? Why, yes, yes I do. Firstly, you have to record in landscape, not portrait. <laughs> Sounds like uh, a simple thing, and for most people it probably is, but if you're like me, a technophobe, then uh, yeah, that clearly took me, took me a whole video to work that out. So yeah, um, <laughs> more serious advice, more serious advice just talk about what you like uh, because if you talk about things because you think they're like gonna get views or trendy or whatever then people are gonna see right through you so don't even bother um, I would say if you're looking to start a channel and grow it uh, not everybody is doing that really um, but if you're looking to really grow then you have to look at continuous improvement right it's um, you know, think about your audio, think about the way that you're videoing, the way that you're creating your thumbnails, think about how you present yourself in your videos, Are you have you got a brand, have you, you know, there's, there's lots of things, there's lots of channels that will help you if you're looking to actively grow your channel and I would recommend that you check those out. I would say I am a, on a bit of a plateau at the moment, I would love to get more into improve the improvement phase but life is just so busy at the moment and uh watching scott's video he scripts all of his videos mate that is a lot of work and <laughs> i should I, I i don't think i would ever script fully but i should make more thorough notes to work from when i'm filming but if I waited till I had thorough notes, I would never upload anything because it's, um, yeah, life. <laughs> uh, but you can see when you watch Scott's videos how much scripting does help. It really does help. Uh, so, yeah, maybe one day, maybe when the kids move out. So if you're still here in hmm, like 15 years, then maybe you'll see a scripted video from me. You lucky things. The next question is, what are my thoughts on the YouTube algorithm? Well, 
uh, <laughs> I would. There's a lot of talk around the YouTube algorithm. I would tend to agree that it doesn't really favour bookish content, and that's not really a surprise because how many people like read, like actively read every day, or even like are sort of semi-interested in books. Um, I would say it's not as many as we would like to think as bookworms. So it's not a surprise that BookTube, um, that YouTube doesn't push bookish videos. I do also think it favours larger channels over smaller channels. Of course it does, um, because you know success breeds success and all that. But actually, I think you know if you plug away, if you work hard, if you try to continuously improve, then YouTube will pick you up and it will give you opportunities for your videos to do well. So yeah that's probably an unpopular opinion but that's my opinion <laughs> so <laughs> the next question is in two parts it's how do you decide what videos to make and am i ever overwhelmed with video ideas uh so i'll take part two first i have loads of video ideas i have a massive spreadsheet i plan out my content two videos three videos a week um and I think I am planned up to like March, April. <laughs> so, but basically that's a fluid plan, right? So when stuff comes up, like that's topical or relevant to the time or I have a specific book review that I wanna do, I just add it in and bumps everything down. Um, so, I wouldn't say overwhelmed. I have loads of video ideas and then I just pick the ones that are most relevant at the time uh, to do. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that I love I'm an ideas person I love ideas execution is where I fall down <laughs> so yeah I um that's how it works in um in Gemma's land of booktube the next question is have you ever regretted posting a video no um I have tried specifically to stay away broadly from highly political topics um I I wouldn't say I shy away from things that I believe in. So an example, okay. So every time I post on trans books, I lose subscribers. Do I care? <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, that's something I'm passionate about. I think supporting the trans community is important um, and I will continue to post those videos. So you could say that those are political, but I wouldn't say I get involved in any booktube drama and uh, I do tend to stay away from very problematic authors or if I do read problematic authors I tend not to mention them in great detail on my channel um, because I just don't I just don't need drama in my life you know I have enough drama I don't need any more I have a four-year-old who may be spawned from the devil so yeah I don't need any more drama thank you okay the next question are the numbers of views and subscribers meaningful to you yes of course of course uh, I know that that's probably not the answer people want to hear but um, yeah I want to see my views increasing and I want to see my subscribers increasing that means that I am doing something right um, if they're going down or they're stagnant then what am i doing wrong how can i adjust that continuous improvement da, 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 da. That, that's just the way my brain works i work in metrics <laughs> i love metrics i love measuring success and yes views and subscribers are a big part of that um which is sort of part b of this question um, there are other metrics to success for me, uh, stuff like retention time. So how long are people watching my videos for? I am aiming, and I'd love to know what other booktubers, like averages and what they're looking at. I am aiming for around 50% retention, um, ideally more, but if I can average 50% retention, that's good for me. The other things I look at are click-through rate, so how many people are clicking on my videos? If my click-through rate is crap, that means my thumbnails are pants. So I can use those metrics to see which parts I need to work on, if you see what I mean. Uh, I also look at comments, 
and likes so you could like now that would be amazing um, <laughs> and that sort of gives me an idea of um, how engaged people are with my content so there are lots of different metrics that measure different things um, I do have a spreadsheet where <laughs> I track a lot of those metrics uh, because that's the kind of brain I have right so the next question is am I disappointed with the growth of my channel and um, it sort of goes back to like the algorithm thing I think you get out what you put in so I can't really be disappointed if I tried harder I would have more growth if I'd have not tried as hard as I have to date I'd have had less growth uh, so I think it is reflective of how much effort I put in you know um, <laughs> But would I like to grow faster? Of course. Do I have the time to make that happen? Probably not. So I will tick along. <laughs> um, hopefully people who watch what I'm putting out enjoy it. And uh, yeah, it is on my to-do list to improve quality, FYI. Have I ever thought about quitting BookTube? Um, no, not really, not seriously. I've had days where I'm like, I'm not doing anything ever again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we all have those days right uh, but no uh, I am very much enjoying it at the moment um, there might be a point where I have to take a break because I am quite overwhelmed uh, but that's more to do with work than it is to do with booktube but it means I've got less time so I might at some point have to take uh, a bit of a break from it but I, uh, I don't think I'll ever quit I like being part of the community and part of the discussion uh, so uh, yeah I can't see that changing the next question is, what are the most touching comments you've had? Um, and I mean, I do like it when you guys comment on the dog and the kids. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> oh dear, my terrible little gang of boys. Um, <laughs> so I do like those comments when people are like, oh, aren't they so cute? I'm like, yeah, they do look cute. When I've edited out all the times they were not being cute, but I appreciate it also when people say that they've picked up a book because I've recommended it I love that um, I mean as a book person that's like the aim right that you recommend books to people that they love uh, so yeah what are those negative comments you've had well I haven't actually had that many negative comments and um, I feel like maybe maybe I need to add this in to my measures of success because uh, if you watch Scott's video he talks about negative comments and uh, like how you get bonus points for every negative comment he didn't quite phrase it like that but I'm paraphrasing because I don't script <laughs> um, but I did have a few negative comments when I did my treacle walker review last year um, it was it was a marmite book people loved it or they hated it I was in the hate it crew um, and I said so <laughs> but there were some people who loved it who were not happy with the fact that I had that opinion um, and looking back now I laugh at it um, but I don't know I at the time I was a bit annoyed um, because people were basically saying that I shouldn't read books that were too advanced for me <laughs> I'm like what how would I firstly how would I know if a book is too advanced for me before I read it and secondly mate that's called censorship. I can read whatever the hell I want and I can have any opinion that I want on that book. Let's be honest, we're talking about reading fiction. Everybody is going to have a different opinion. It's subjective. Um, get over yourself. But people were like really, really angry that I'd read this book and not liked it because I hadn't understood all the underlying waffle. Um, <laughs> and don't get me wrong, if people loved it great great for them I didn't love it and I know that a lot of other people didn't love it so sometimes people want to just know that their feelings are validated and I was validating the feelings of the people who did not love that book um, but yeah it was quite interesting people got quite quite irate about it um, calling me all sorts of names for being an idiot basically <laughs> I was like whoa okay <laughs> um, so yeah I laugh about it now but at the time I was like what the what the Jiminy that's what Charlie says I don't know where he got it from he also says what the earth <laughs> anyway um last question in regards to booktube where do I see myself in five years um five years is a long time and this feels like an interview question um 
but in five years time the kids will be a lot older so my youngest will be nine um so i'm expecting that i will probably have a little bit more time um because the kids will be that little bit older they'll like want to you know be grumpy in their bedrooms um and so i'll probably have more time to focus on improving the quality of my videos maybe do more like um vlog style videos maybe i mean i'd love to be one of these people that like read the a list of books and then comes back to you and talks to you about it um but time does not allow for that at the moment so yeah i'd like to think that i will have more time to create better content in five years is basically what i'm saying um and that is all the questions so if you managed to stick around right to the very end then i want one of those like 100 emojis because you completed 100 percent of the video <laughs> <laughs> um i would love to know your thoughts on any of these questions particularly the patreon one and if you want a bit of a shorter sweeter video after this one i'll leave my five booktube secrets which tells you a bit about how else i feel about booktube right here okay see you soon guys bye